Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Avernum 3. Last episode, we decided to start exploring more in the southeast region of Valorum. And we found a bunch of basilisks. And fortunately, Pollux managed to secure one in the Soul Crystal. We're probably going to have use for that. Now, well, we know that there's a bit more area to the southeast. Let me just take a look to the north a bit first. Nothing over there. Uh, oh. Six bears and a Nursog. These are going to be easy to kill. And casting of this will kill all the regular bears. And there goes the Ursag. You stand at the southeastern end of a long valley. Looking up, you see, growing among the rocks, many varieties of beautiful flowers. Their pollen wafts down to you on the wind, enticing you to climb up and experience them. And we got spiritual herbs and 40 coins. Nice. Give those to Pollux. Hi, I'm a talking Shut up. Skull. You are not alone in the in admiring the flowers. A bunch of gremlins live in this valley, and they aren't at all inclined to share shit. Not gremlins. Oh no. God damn it. Not these things. Not freaking gremlins. Kill them all. Ow, ow. I hate those guys. There are beautiful, breathtaking flowers growing all along this valley, exploding in intricate rainbow patterns of colors. Their scent fills the air. After years in the dark and mold of Avernum, the sights and smells almost overcome you with emotion. You encounter another bunch of green-thumbed, figuratively and literally, gremlins. Eleven of them, goddammit! Kill them all. God damn it. flowers growing here are even more beautiful than the ones to the southeast. However, none of them are quite perfect enough to take with you. You stumble upon a cluster of gremlins, carefully tending to rows of dozens of different sorts of flowers. Irrational, irritable creatures that they are, they decide to water the flowers with your blood. More gremlins! I will destroy each and every single gremlin I see. You reach the far end of the valley, passing more and more beautiful flora as you go. Finally, at the top, you find a patch of flowers that makes all the rest look plain by comparison. In the middle of the patch, you find a very small rose bush. In its center grows a single rose, a perfect specimen of the species, flawless in petal and rich in smell. If you wished, you could pick the flower and take it with you. Sure. You pick a single flower, keeping plenty of dirt around the roots so that, it do so that it doesn't die. You pause to admire it. It is absolute perfection in plant form. The curve of its petals elegant and the smell seemingly endless. You carefully pack it away. Uh, all that for a flower. I think I know where we're supposed to bring it, though. Oh, and this must be where we're supposed to find those uh, Ursoc that we were supposed to deal with at some point. Eh, you know what, we should probably take care of the, uh... Of exploring th this forest is exceptionally pr beautiful. The trees seem nicely tended, and there is a great profusion of forest creatures frolicking about. Oh, and there's a little something in the middle there. 
Hello. Let's speak here. You meet a dryad. She is a beautiful feminine creature of the woods, and her hair and skin are tinted green. She, is, she isn't as peaceful and carefree as dryads are reputed to be. She is quite distraught. I am Esselaria. Why are you so upset? I am trying to regain my grove. It's been taken. Fresh tears begin to run her, down her face. What happened to your grove? She stamps her foot in fury. A fierce ogre snuck in and scared me out. A dryad's grove is her life. I'm trying to figure out how to remove the horrible creature. Oh, how I wish someone would get rid of it for me. Have you had any ideas about how to remove the ogre? No! He's a horrid beast, the biggest I've ever seen. It's in there now, burning my trees and killing my pets. Oh, how I'd reward someone who slew it. How do you know what it is doing? You don't know much, do you? A dryad is linked to her grove. I feel the death of every tree and every animal. If something isn't done to the ogre soon, I'll be done for. What reward will you offer for the slaying of the ogre? Her tears dry up, replaced by a furious gaze. The ogre stole some of my trinkets. Whoever slew it could have them. But there's a problem. What sort of trinkets did he steal? Gold, magic items, that sort of thing. Nothing as important as a tree. Sure. What problems? One of you can enter my glade to the east, but only one of you. My glade has surrounded my magical defense, but they are working against me now. Only one outsider can enter. That's how that w one ogre got in. Please, 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 will one of you accept this quest? Perhaps I can help. If you do, just go through the magical door to the northeast. It is the entrance to my glade. My hopes go with you. She blushes and then starts to cry again. Alright, I think Teresa might be the best option to go through. He can heal himself, after all. Alright, then. The forest is a little thinner here. Between two of the trees, there is a shimmering magical doorway. You can enter the Dryad's Grove here. Whether that's a good idea or not is a fair question. Enter. Small and weak, only enough energy to carry one. Alright, Teresa. Go ahead in. You reach a shadowy glade. There's something very cold and unwelcoming about this forest, as if a malevolent force has invaded it. In the glade, you see a gremlin. Oddly, it doesn't attack. It just stares at you. A nasty little gremlin is grinning at you. I'm a gremlin! You're an intruder here, but I don't need to kill you yet! Why are you here, gremlin? It gives you a toothy little grin. I should be helping you get further into the grove! Get on with it, then. But just being helpful wouldn't be very gremlinish now, would it? It emits a high-pitched little laugh. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll help you if you can answer my riddle. What's the riddle? I have a thousand little knives. My hands are red and white. You can give them to your maid to make things turn out right. What am I? A flower? Not quite. Try again. You think, but you're not smart enough to figure out the puzzle. The gremlin laughs. <laughs> on then. You'll just have to keep going without my help. A rose? A rose. Correct. In return, I shall tell you this. Proceed on the path with the gravel at the entrance. Otherwise, you'll get beaten on. So, this path. Okay. Okay, that was a dead end. Man, this place is a bloody maze. Another gremlin. An unusually tall gremlin a full three feet is waiting here for you. It says, One, two, three, four. You aren't sure why. Um, hi. Why are you standing here? Six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five. You aren't sure what it wants to be saying. Maybe that is the point? One, two, three... Uh... Two, three, four, five. He looks offended. Four, five, six, seven! Four, five, six, seven? One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! Two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, zero? Five, six, seven, eight? Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Hmm, 
four five uh five six seven eight. Seven eight nine zero says the gremlin excitedly. It points at the path with gravel at the beginning. Five six seven eight five six seven eight It looks pleased that it's been so helpful. Hmm, four five seven eight. The gremlin suddenly looks very offended. You aren't sure what you said. It doesn't speak anymore. Path with gravel at the entrance. Oh boy! <laughs> Wrong path! On the plus side, I killed them. Okay. And spider webs. Okay. This must be... Ah, here we are. All these webs everywhere. Yeesh, this is annoying. Ah, this must be it. The grove to the south is full of a field of beautiful poppies, all of them fresh and in bloom. Their powerful, pervasive scent makes you feel lightheaded. Your vision gets blurry. I'm going to try to not step on them. Probably be bad. There we go, that wasn't too bad. You reach the deepest part of the glade and see, sleeping before you, the ogre that invaded it. It's a massive creature, much larger than any ogre you've ever seen. It snores deeply. Sneak into the glade. Sadly, the ogre is a very light sleeper. The moment you set foot inside its glade, it begins to stir. The moment it smells you, it opens its eyes wide, grabs a club, and begins to lumber towards you. Ow. At long last, the ogre has taken more punishment than it can withstand. It falls to the ground with a mighty thud. Almost immediately, the dryad's grove seems brighter and cheerier. Huh. Let's see, we got... Spiritual herbs and a necklace. We don't really need the rest of this. So that works. Oh, and there's more stuff back here, including haste potion, an unidentified elixir, blessed bolts, and uh, too many items. And we can't get the bolts of life either. Crap. Ah, well, no biggie. We've gotten stuff. We don't really need the rest. Now we just get out of here. It's gonna be a bit of a trip as I figure out how to get out of here. Come on. E, how you doing? Shut up. Okay, I think I can figure this out. Down this way. Um, oh. Not quite the way I meant to go. And around this way. And you reach the tangled thicket you pass through to enter the grove. There is a matching glowing doorway on this side. Enter. You walk out through the glowing trees and find the dryad Esselair waiting for you. She walks up and kisses you on the cheek. Thank you. Thank you for saving my home. With a cheery nod to the rest of you, she walks off into the wood. You try to see where she went, but as you watch, the forest has started to shift. The trees seem different every time you look. The dryad's grove is no longer welcoming visitors. Well, we got through. Okay, give that to him. Haste potion goes to Carl. Heroic brew. Nice. Goes to Carl. And the neck and the unidentified necklace also to Carl. That was nice. Uh now oh, what the hell? Let's take a look to the north, see what's up there. I'm pretty sure this will lead to a dead end. Plus, I think we actually have a quest out here. Hello. Well, let's take a look at this. You find the shaft of an abandoned mine. The roof hasn't been shored up by timbers as is usual. The tunnel looks like it has been dug out not with picks and shovels, but with huge claws. Enter the mine. You explore the inside of the mine. Fortunately, there are no guards. You also find that the mine still has plenty of nice gold ore sitting on the ground. Take it. You emerge from the mine, pa packing a few sacks of valuable gold nuggets. You don't see anyone hostile. Looks like you have escaped safely. 
Nice. Ah, it's something up here. Uh, you find a tunnel. Looks like an abandoned mine shaft. You find bits of fur, trash, and gnawed bones around the entrance, and a fresh foul reek wafts out of the tunnel. Enter. You step carefully into the lair. You try to tread carefully and silently, but your scent gives you away. The Yersagi inside are waiting for you, and their goblin slaves are eager to help. Oh, there's the Yersagi we were... I remember ages ago we were told to kill. Alright. This won't be too hard, I think. There we go. Having defeated the monsters, you search their lair. There's shredded, rotting meat aplenty. You leave that behind. There's a bunch of gold, and you take that. There's also a very nice pike. The looting done, you leave this grisly lair. Pike, eh? What kind? Uh, steel pike. Not really useful to us, but we can sell it. Hey, healing herbs! Oh, that's the perfect flower? Huh. Teresa can hold on to that, I guess. I think I know who needs that, too. Not gremlins. God damn it. Not more of these bastards. Tell me you can kill the- God damn it all. Kill him. Ugh. Hate those things. Huh. More let. Oh! Huh, that's random. Doesn't seem like there's anything else up there, just that. I wonder what the purpose of it is. Alright. Oh! A cavern. This is. Large. Lair of the Ursagi. So I guess this is where we're supposed to clear out. Well, let's take a look here. Light up. You walk into a lair full of Ursagi, the massive, sinister, intelligent bears that infest these hills. As you enter, you think that you can hear some of the creatures talking and moving outside. If you go farther, you may face an ugly ambush. As you move farther in, you hear the deafening rumble of stone behind you. It's an avalanche! You dive for cover. When the rockfall ends, you look back and see something has rolled massive amounts of stone into the cave entrance. You're trapped. No, my horses! Several Ursagi were concealed on ledges above and behind you. They leap out to ambush you. You are amazed by how fast and limber the massive beasts are. Their huge teeth and claws bared, they come after you. Right, here's a fight. Quite a fight. Okay then. Provided the healing. And this should do a number to quite a few of them. Oh yeah, th this isn't going to be too big a problem. There we go. I'm more annoyed by the fact we're trapped and our horses are outside. No need to take that. There's an Ursagi up there. Ah, what the hell. Go kill it. And another fireball. That one's dead. Well, we found the people that the Ursagi managed to trap. Gymnastics charm! I'm guessing that just gives a bonus to gymnastics. An identified ring. And nothing there. Uh, am I right about it just giving a bonus to gymnastics? Plus run to gymnastics. I was right. Alright, let's take a look around this way. Huh, interesting. That looks like an altar. You get close to this pile of rubble and find that there is more to it than meets the eye. It's been piled here in tall, elaborate spires, and the Ursagi have carved delicate designs into each stone with their claws. 
And as you look at the designs, however, you start to feel edgy and weak. You have to back away. You aren't sure whether this is some sort of odd or soggy temple or something even more bizarre. It's a type of magic you've never seen. I have an idea. Let's try... Ritual of Sanctification. You built up a massive charge of holy energy and hurl it at the strange stone structure. The structure absorbs the energy and remains completely undamaged. Whatever this thing is, it's a type of magic you're completely unfamiliar with. So much for that. Jeez. That is... Oh boy. Okay, this is the upper level. Okay. Let's take a look down there. Hello, bear. And goblin. And another bear. Oop. Yeah, they're coming. Fortunately, we can kill them relatively easily. Get back here, you goblin! Thank you. You finally find a way out of this cavern. It's a secret or soggy escape route. From the outside, it's concealed by heavy thickets and shrubs. We're not leaving yet. We gotta clear this place out. A ring? Hmm. We got a lot of unidentified stuff. We're gonna need to sell this stuff that we have. More bears. Okay. Let's see. Nothing there. Wand of fire. We don't need that. Let me take a look at this. The Ursagi have the odd tendency to use goblins as slaves, servants, and grooms. And possibly sometimes food, but you prefer not to think about that. This is where their goblins are stored when not being used. Uh, what exactly do they mean by grooms? And do I really want to know? Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, Nippor can hold on to that. There's another Asagi that is now dead. Healing elixir. Okay. And this way, nothing over here. That one's dead. This is interesting. The farther south you go, the chillier this cavern gets. You have to be careful to keep from slipping on the icy floor. There are patches of thick ice on the ground. It glows slightly and is cold enough to most likely be somewhat magical. That looks like an ice drake. Yeah, that's an ice drake. Enfeebled. That doesn't seem good. Fortunately, we can kill that thing. Okay. Another healing, and another fireball. We'll finish that thing off. There we go. Easily done. Plenty of loot back here that we can use. Even a spell tome. Ooh. Ruby, haste elixir, strength elixir, short sword. Plenty of good stuff. Let's see what the spell tome gives us. Follix? Read it. Call Beast level 3. Not terrible. Not terrible. We don't really use it, but not terrible. Die. Die. And... I think we just about killed all of them. That should be it. You work your way into a tiny concealed cavern and come face to face with enough gold ore to make even the most jaded gold dale miner drool. Yeah, that's a lot of gold ore. Nice. Hi, I'm a talking skull. Shut up. That said, I think that's everything that's here, so we're gonna need to take the secret exit. Then come back in to get our horses back. I'm not leaving our horses. Hi, I'm a talking Shut up. Skull. My horses. Yay. Okay. Let me take a look here. That just goes to the other side here. Okay, then. I 
feel like there may be something up here. I guess not. Okay, so that's actually everything over there. We need to go to Goldale. We need to get things identified. We need to get all this taken care of. Fortunately, Goldale is right here. And we can lo and we can now finally complete this quest that we were given oh so long ago. Uh, I think there's actually someone who will identify things, too. Ah, you're the one who gave the quest. Have we killed enough of the Osagi in the mine far to the east? I'm guessing so. She laughs in glee. Ha ha ha, you did it! They've abandoned the cave! She pulls a beautiful broadsword, pommel wrapped in leather and with a ruby at the end, out from under her desk. This is yours! I wish I had another job to give to one of your skills. Alas, all I have need of are people with strong backs to do my digging. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Alright, uh, someone around here... I think you identify things. Yes, you do. Alright, let's see here. We got Shielding Charm. Not a bad charm. Clumsy Ring, no. Blessed Longsword, that's nice. Icy Chainmail, very impressive. Gauntlets of Might. Holy crap! That is way... Yes! Ring of Health. Not terrible. And Cursed Short Sword. Okay, drop the Cursed so Short Sword. And drop the Clumsy Ring. I see Chainmail's pretty good. 5 to 30 protection. That is... And resistance to fire damage. That's good. These Gauntlets of Might. Oh yes, those are going on to Carl. The Human Skid and Gloves. Hmm. Uh, the human skin gloves I guess I can give to Therese. Uh, and the nimble gloves to Pollux. Actually, no. Doesn't need the nimble gloves. We can sell the nimble gloves. Okay, uh, ring of health. I don't think any of us really need. No, we don't really need that. Uh, shielding charm. Let's see. I don't think any of us really need that. It's protection from all damage, but that's about it. This icy chainmail, though, even though the crafted chainmail gives a plus one to dexterity, the icy chainmail gives a lot more protection in general. So I'm giving that to him, to Nippur. Seal chainmail. Eh, he can hold on to that, and we can sell the. Crafted chainmail at last. We'll improve his dexterity later at some point, eventually. Uh, what are the other things we got? Gymnastics charm, don't need that. Blessed longsword. Better than the serendipity knife. So that will go to Nippur. Serendipity knife to Pollux, actually. And there we go. Okay, now. You are a training hall. There's someone who, sa who sells up here. Alright. Sell that. 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 And sell that. And that is plenty good. Alright. Episode's almost over, but there's one more thing I need to do before I forget. And that's deal with this perfect flower. I know exactly where it goes, and I'm going to bring it to that person right now. Bit of a run, but we can reach it. Right... over... here. Remember this grove ages ago? Uh, yes, enter. A female form walks from the woods, delicate, beautiful, clad in leaves. It's the same dryad you met before, and she doesn't look happy. Oh, you filthy lot are back. I still long to see something beautiful. Do you have something beautiful to show me? I do believe we do.
Ooh. You present the dryad with the perfect flower. She smells it, twirls on one foot, and laughs. <laughs> oh, thank you, it's wonderful. Then she runs up and gives each of you a kiss on the cheek. Your skin tingles where her lips were. Now as a reward, I'll tell you a secret. Far to the north, near Kalok, is a place where trees grow in a square. Stand in the middle and walk straight south and you'll find a reward. Now go away. She sits down to admire her flower. You slip away. Thank you. We'll keep that in mind. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that'll be the end of this episode. Next episode, we will go back to what we were doing before and explore further in the, uh, in the southeast. No. Take a look at the other towns that are down there. Why not? Maybe we'll find something else good and interesting. Plus, hey, it was nice to be able to complete those quests. Maybe we'll find more quests. Hi, I'm we'll a see. But uh, that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Tristan44, that is Carl Nepore, Pollux, and Teresa. This is Evin and Avernum 3 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.